Hello and welcome to yet another video by Pale Blue Thoughts. But before we start today's video, let us stand up and stand still for a minute in a silent prayer. Nah, I'm just kidding. But today's topic is on prayer. Prayer, a deeply ingrained religious practice that spans across cultures and beliefs, often involving reaching out to a higher power in moments of need, gratitude or contemplation. Almost everyone does it on purpose and sometimes without thinking. For many, prayer is an integral part of their faith, allowing them to connect with their chosen deities and seek guidance or intervention. I remember my parents sitting me down when I was a child and teaching me prayers and making me say it every evening. I still remember most of them. However, what I remember even more vividly is that I never liked doing it and thought it was a fruitless exercise and a waste of time. I could never concentrate while praying and used all kinds of excuses to try and escape the ordeal. I must have been 6 to 7 at the time, definitely before my teens. As I grew up, I realized that praying is an ultimate waste of time and effort. First of all, who are we praying to? Do we have any evidence of someone up there to answer our prayers? Not even a single iota of evidence is present. So why do countless people do this futile exercise? Let's dive right into it, shall we? So what is a prayer? It's a way of begging before a non-existing being. Do we pray because prayers work? No, we pray because prayers don't work. If they did, then we won't have to pray again. In fact, the first person who prayed would have gotten everything, leaving you with nothing. Many people often say that prayers give them a sense of hope, a sense of satisfaction, a sense of gratitude. Now when Hindus pray, they get satisfaction. When Muslims and Christians pray, they too get satisfaction. How is this possible? What does this prove? This proves that it is not whom you pray to or what you pray for that matters, but prayer is a delusion caused by your minds. Even if you switched your religion from Hindu to a Muslim, the Hindu gods won't do anything to you. Now let us see how prayers appear to work. When you're praying, you would have a list of things that you want to get or achieve. That may range from getting more money, a better job, a better wife perhaps, a better life, removal of disease, mental satisfaction and world peace. No, not that, unless you are a Miss Universe contestant. Now if you observe over a period of time, five things could happen to your wishes. Some of them would come true, some of them would turn out to be partially successful. Some would be neutral, neither there nor here. Some would be partially negative and some would be completely negative or even things could happen exactly opposite to what you prayed for. You wished for a lottery and instead of that, you got robbed by a scamster online. Only those things which had a chance of occurring naturally would occur. Suppose all the believers in this world sat around a person who has lost his limb and prayed for it to be regrown. It would never happen. But a lizard can achieve it without a problem because the software is there in its system. Humans don't have that software. So no matter how anyone prayed, what cannot happen naturally would never happen. You can't fly on your own even if you prayed non-stop for a decade. When something happens due to its natural course, we are planting it on some divinity or external entity. Even if you replace the supernatural being and pray to your phone instead of a stone, the same five possibilities that I mentioned earlier would happen. Write and see. I don't know if you have heard of this church called Lourdes in France. Millions flock in there year on year in the hope of getting their diseases healed. Millions have been coming there for years now. But as per Vatican, only 7,000 people have reported experiencing supernatural healings at Lourdes. And a mere 70 of those cures have been recognized by the Catholic Church as miraculous. Of course, these 70 were chosen to be miraculous because they couldn't find a scientific explanation for the recovery. 70 of those tens of thousands of millions who visited to pray for a cure is a pretty small number. I don't know if Pope Benedict had heard of Lud and similar divine churches in Velankanni in Tamil Nadu or Pentecostal institutions in Kerala where they claimed to have cured thousands of people who couldn't walk, talk or had a heart block. If he had, he would have had to simply visit there and pray to be healed 
instead of resigning citing health reasons in 2013 all these faith healing that is supposed to be happening at churches and majlises and dhamshalas and dhams are just fooling the people into believing that they have been cured miraculously they would finally end up in their graves unable to tell their sordid tale to others and change their foolish thought process it's a scam it is cheating it is a criminal act but if such acts are done in the name of religion no one would dare to touch it or oppose it and it is not fearing the wrath of the god it is for the fear of the god's fans god would not take arms and kill humans but the fans would so what happens in these faith healing centers is simply taking people for a ride exploitation of their gullibility how does this provide satisfaction praying also teaches children some very bad habits what is praying it is another way to beg for whatever you need it is blatant corruption you are offering something a little extra to get your job done when you teach your child to pray you are teaching him how to beg and how to bribe the same child would not hesitate to reach for his wallet to save himself from let's say a parking ticket you are instilling the wrong morals in young minds that corruption is okay if you think from another angle praying is actually going against god's plan most religions believe that god has planned things for you if you are born short that is how he made you if you are born poor that is how he intended you to be if you failed an exam or did not get good marks that was his objective if you don't have kids or your wife fights with you day and night it is his wish but the believer is not ready to accept god's plan he simply cannot accept it he wants more money he wants more kids he wants more marks so he prays and tries to overturn god's plan so praying is literally going against god's actual wishes if you go by the theory several researches have been done on finding out if prayers have been effective one of the most important one was a study conducted by the templeton foundation called the study of the therapeutic effects of intercessory prayer or step which was published in 2006 in the american heart journal the study aimed to assess whether intercessory prayers could improve the recovery of patients undergoing coronary artery bypass surgery surprisingly the study found that there was no significant differences in recovery rates between the patients who had received the prayers and those who did not in an unexpected twist patients who knew prayers were being said for them had more complications after surgery than those who did not know The study was designed as a randomized and blinded trial meaning that some patients did not know whether someone was praying for them or not such trials as you may know are considered the gold standard for scientific proof more than 1800 patients were divided into three groups those who were told someone was praying for them those who were told only that someone might pray for them and got prayers and those who were told someone might pray for them but received no prayers about 65% of the patients said they strongly believed in the power of prayer the prayer groups which consisted of two catholic monasteries and a protestant group started praying the night before surgery and continued for two weeks all members of the prayer groups recited the same intercession asking for a successful surgery and a quick healthy recovery and no complications the results showed that prayers had no beneficial effect on patients recovery 30 days after surgery overall 59% of patients who knew they were being prayed for had complications compared to 51% of the patients who did not receive prayers the difference was not considered statistically significant all groups were just as likely to develop infections or die the result was very evident people who knew they were being prayed for had severe stress response and the thoughts on their heads must have been am i so sick that they had to call a prayer team that would have raised their anxiety instead of providing satisfaction so that is my take on why praying might not be the best use of your time i've thought about it from a practical point of view as a free thinker i figured out that spending time praying especially hoping for magic fixes can distract us from doing stuff that really makes a difference throughout history people have done amazing things by learning trying new things and working together Science and learning about the world have led to awesome discoveries. We have landed a rover on the moon using scientific technology and not by prayers or lemons and chilies. When problems pop up, teaming up and helping each other works wonders. We all pitch in and make things better, way more effective than just waiting around 
for prayers to work. Time is super precious. Spending it on things like growing personally, making friends and doing good things for everyone should be a big deal for us. And what about those of us who don't adhere to religious beliefs? As atheists, we don't subscribe to the notion of divine beings or supernatural forces. Our values as atheists are rooted in compassion and empathy for fellow human beings. We believe in the power of human agency, valuing actions that bring about positive change in our lives and the lives of others. Our sense of community and shared humanity drives us to find support and meaning in our relationships, in our shared experiences and the beauty of the natural world. Exploration and discovery are at the heart of our worldview. We seek answers through scientific inquiry, aiming to uncover the mysteries of the universe through evidence and reason. In a world where things can be confusing, we find power in thinking, exploring and moving forward. So as I finish up, think about how you spend your time. Is it mostly on stuff that makes sense? Or do you sometimes spend it praying without doing? Stay tuned for more insightful discussions on our channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe for thought-provoking content. Thanks for watching.